any other announcements? We're on the home stretch now, guys. Um, next week is the bazaar, Saturday, less than a week away. Um, there's a lot of planning, a lot of um, a lot of things that need to happen this week, and I'm going to need some assistance because I work now in High Point. So I need some people who can come and open the church for people to bring things to the church Thursday and Friday. I also need some people who have strong backs that can help me move some tables around so we can set it up. Hopefully we can do that on Wednesday. Um, if I can get some volunteers to help me move tables on Wednesday evening, I would appreciate it because we're going to have to take some tables down from upstairs to the downstairs some of the, from the Sunday school classes. If anyone can help me, please see me after church. Wednesday about 6.30 or so would be great. I think we can do that in about 30 minutes because I got choir practice. I'm look, he's looking at me really mean now. Um, <laughs> and then um, I have some people have asked for cakes and pies. We still have raffle tickets. Please keep all of this in mind um, for the sweet shop, for the desserts, for the drinks. If you're asked to bring drinks, if just remember everything needs to be there by hopefully Saturday morning before 7 because we open the doors at 7. Thank you, guys. Young people will meet again this Saturday at 5 o'clock in the evening for uh, pizza this week and working on our music for uh, the church service that we're going to do between now and Christmas. We had a really good crowd last night. If everybody can show back up again, and if there are any others that weren't here last night at 5 o'clock, if you'll please be here at 5. And then the other thing that uh, you need to know is the last Sunday in this month, October the 27th, East Rowan Honors Course will be here for the 11 o'clock service, so keep that in mind. I know all of you will want to be here. Thank you. Hey, I want to talk to you about pastoral search one more time. If you guys will, let's meet right over here for about five minutes right after church. Uh, got one I want to look at just uh, to interview. Well, we've got probably four or five we need to interview it. This is one we'd like to go ahead and get done. And it's maybe a little bit different than what you would normally do, which I guess normally you wait until later in the process to interview, but uh, I don't think it really makes a lot of difference whether you interview first or last. So anyway, let's meet right over here so we can find a time to uh, interview this gentleman. All right, thanks. Now, if you will, please stand for the opening hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life, Red Hymnal, page 204. Remain standing for the call to worship. 
Today we gather around God's table near and far. We are the people of God. Though we differ in language, custom, and traditions, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. For there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We are one in God's spirit. We are one, and together we remember our Lord Jesus. For we are the people of redemption. He gave himself up for us so we could be reunited with God. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. And now, in the spirit of trust in our Father, hear us as we confess our sins in our prayer together. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of mercy, we confess that we have not loved you with all of our being. We have done things which we should not have done and we have left undone things which we should have finished. We have built walls between neighbors and between countries, and we have ignored the cries of those in need. Forgive us and set us free, that we may live into the hope of your calling, that your reign may come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. You may be seated. Now we will turn it over to Kevin with the music ministry. Kevin and the choir. If the ushers would come forward, please. There are many ways to respond to God's faithfulness, love, and mercy in our lives. Whatever our struggles, whatever our miracles, we are thankful for the blessings from God. We come now seeking to be faithful disciples and to respond to God by the giving of our offering today.
Gracious and loving God, you have blessed us beyond our imagination and certainly beyond any deserving on our part. And we thank you for all of the ways that you have blessed us and especially for the gifts that you have given to us that make it possible for us to live life. And now we return to you a small part of that which you have entrusted to our care, calling upon you to bless these gifts and bless those who have given them. Instruct us and help us as we seek to use them in your service. Amen. Now, oh boy, we're turning it over to Richard Archer with the children's sermon. I always look forward to your children's sermons. Kids, come up. Good morning. I want to tell you a story this morning about Barry the Bear. Now, you've seen bears before. You know what a bear is. Well, Barry lived very, very deep in the woods. He, he was back there by himself. He was the only bear there. And he was just by himself, and he had the woods to himself. And Barry's favorite thing to do in the whole wide world was to eat. He wanted to eat everything he could find. And of course, being in the woods like that, he didn't have a McDonald's or a Hardee's or any other restaurants to go to. So he had to hunt for his food. And he wandered all day, every day, looking for berries, and nuts, and small uh, plants that he could eat, and he ate all day long. He'd climb trees and, and find uh, little bugs and animals that he could eat in the tree limbs. And that was what he did all day long. That was his whole life. And as luck would have it one day when he was hunting, he looked up and he saw a hole in a tree. And he said, what in the world could that be? So he decided to climb up in the tree and see what that hole was. And when he got up way high in the tree and he stuck his head in to see what was in the hole and he jerked his head out, what do you think he saw? What? He saw a bunch of nuts and squirrels. No, not exactly. What he saw was a beehive dripping in honey. Now, honey was his favorite food of anything he could possibly have. And there was a beehive just full. But he had a problem. Where there's a beehive and honey, what else is there? Hundreds and hundreds of bees. And they would sting him if he bothered that honey. Well, he had to make a decision. Was that honey worth getting all the stings that he knew he was going to get if he stuck his paw in there and got that honey? And he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he figured it out. He decided it was worth it. And he stuck that paw in there, and he got a big hunk of that honey and pulled it out. And, of course, that made all the bees mad. And they attacked him just stung him all over from the tip of his nose to the bottom of his feet and everything in between. He was just eaten up with bees, but it was worth it because he loved that honey. And he, he, he was willing to, to have the bee stings in order to get the honey. And people are kind of like the bear. And he had this problem, and he had to make a decision. Well, in our lifetime, we're going to be faced with problems that we have to decide what we want to do. Now, we have choices to make, and we have obstacles that will be facing us during our lifetime. And we have to do what's best, or what we think is best, 
or what we want. If we want it bad enough or if we don't want it bad enough, what would the results be if we did something? So we, like the bear, had to make that decision. And the Bible says that no decision or no obstacle that we have here on earth is nearly as good as the reward of facing Jesus Christ on the day of the reckoning. That's what we want, and that's the most important reward that we could get. So when we're looking at decisions in life, we have to decide, is it worth doing? Is it something I really want to do, I really want to be involved in? Or do you want to, to still be a Christian and be around to see Jesus face to face when that trumpet goes. So that's the part that we have to think. Barry the bear had to make that decision. And he decided that the these things were worth it. And we have to make decisions on the things that we come across in our daily life. Is it worth doing? Is it important to us? Or is it more important to remain Christians and be with God in eternity? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we pray for the day to come when we will hear the trumpet and face God in heaven. We would pray to you to give us the strength and the courage to endure what obstacles we face here on earth so that we may be remaining Christians and remain in God's favor and be with God in heaven. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Lauren, I think she was a little bit upset because she didn't get to come down for the children's sermon. So make sure you bring her next Sunday, okay? No, it's great to hear babies in this church. Now I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Clapp with a pastoral prayer. My thanks also to Richard. I hope that uh, Barry is not the bear that I, uh, that's been coming into the neighborhood where I have a little cabin up in the mountains. Uh, and he might decide that uh, since he likes to eat everything, he'd like to eat me as well. But uh, uh, thank you for, for that message. And I invite you to join with me now as we go to God in prayer. Most wonderful God, we pause now to lift our voices and our minds, our very beings to you, seeking to praise you and to glorify you. Our presence here this morning says that we love you and we choose to worship you and we call upon you to be present and at work in our lives, and we do so with the knowledge that you will indeed be with us in all that we are about, that you will supply, supply for our needs, that you will walk with us and give us strength and courage. And indeed, if we are to prepare ourselves to hear that trumpet and to be accepted into your everlasting arms, we know that we need to give ourselves more fully and honoring you and serving you. Oftentimes the way of doing that seems difficult. Temptations assail us from all sides. And so we call upon you now to give us that strength that we need to provide us with perseverance, to instruct us in what you would have us do and how we can live faithful lives. In that spirit, dear God, we come before you to worship you we lift up this congregation. We pray your blessings upon them as they continue in this search process as new leadership is brought to the congregation. Dear God, we pray your blessings upon them as they prepare for their bazaar and for those activities which provide them a presence in the community and a way of celebrating you and sharing you with others. And indeed, we pray that you will be with them and with all of us 
as we seek to live faithful lives of service and of sharing your love. We are mindful of those who are sick and in need of healing, those who are lonely and are need, in need of knowing your love exemplified by the way that we reach out to them. For those who are dealing with all kinds of difficulties and turmoil in their lives and who need your strength and help. Once again, dear God, we ask that you would help us to be your arms and your feet to share that love that you so generously provide us. And we ask your blessings upon our community, upon our state, our nation, and indeed the entire world. We continue to pray for peace, dear God, and, and realize that we must start that process as we seek in our own individual lives and in our local community to be peacemakers. And dear God, we once again give thanks to you for being so good to us, for providing for our needs, for walking with us on our journey of life. And now as we come to your table after a message this morning, we do so once again with thankful hearts. And we pray that all of this may prepare us to go into the week ahead, being faithful to you and living lives that will bring glory and honor to you. All of these things we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I share with you from Holy Scripture this morning, reading first from the Psalms, uh, from Psalm 118, the first ten verses. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. I know there's a page there. There we go. Okay. Out of my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look and triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. And turning to the New Testament, to the letter to the Galatians, reading from the sixth chapter of that letter, the first ten verses, and then verses 16 and 19. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Look to yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor, for each man will have to beat his own load, to bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word share all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are the household of faith. And then turning to our Gospel lesson, which comes from Luke's Gospel, in the 10th chapter of Luke's Gospel, verses 1 to 12. 
After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon them. But if not, it shall return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you, heal the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that town. May God add His blessing to the readings, these readings from Holy Scripture, and to each of us who hear these words and attempt to know, to understand, and live by them. Amen. Please stand for the glory of God. It's always special to come into the house of the Lord to worship, and I consider this to be a special place where that worship takes place. I have said to you on a number of occasions, no doubt, that uh, being here is really special for me because of the connections of this congregation over the years with Catawba College, where I've served for the last 30 years. But also, when I look at these names, uh, not only do I see my great-great-uncle's name up there, but I see the names of many pastors that were uh, mentors to me and persons uh, that were very important to, my, to the development of my own faith. And so, in preparing for today, I was thinking about the importance of worship in our lives and just as importantly, the importance of the persons with whom we gather to worship and the importance of our supporting one another in our spiritual journeys through our lives. If you listened carefully to those passages of Scripture, you may have been thinking, why has he selected these passages? How do they relate to what we are about today? And particularly the fact that we have gathered to worship and to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. In some way, those are hard passages. The passage from the Psalms, of course, reminds us of the importance of worship in our lives. It reminds us of the importance of our making known to God that we love God and that we seek to serve God. And it contains the promise, that very comforting promise, that God will care for us and God will meet our needs 
and sustain us on our journeys. This passage from Luke from the New Testament may be the most troubling in one sense and at the same time the most comforting and the most helpful because we are reminded there that Jesus sent out the disciples, the ones who had surrounded him, the ones he loved so very much. He sent them out into the world to share his love with others and to teach others about the love of God and what it was to be a follower of God. But he did so recognizing that was not going to be easy. Not easy at all. In fact, he said, I send you forth as lambs in the midst of wolves. That's a pretty frightening thought, isn't it? And that if we are to be faithful in the way that the followers surrounding Jesus Christ in that time were seeking to be faithful, we may feel that we're being sent as lambs in the midst of wolves. Indeed, if we look at the world in which we live, and if we are truly cognizant of what is happening in our world today, it's hard not to feel that way. There was a time when being members of the Christian faith and of the Christian church put you in the majority. It was kind of the thing to do. And it was a status symbol for too many, perhaps, that came because people were applauded for being people of faith. They were applauded for their efforts to serve their faith. Well, our world has changed. And we live in a time, we call it the post-Christian era. I think I've mentioned that in previous sermons with this congregation because it's something that we must recognize. We must accept that fact, and we must ask, what does that mean for us? And then if we hear, as we must, that God continues to call us to service, that God continues to call us to be His people sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with those around us, with those with whom we work, with our family members, with those with whom we engage in community activities and so forth. And we recognize the state of the world in which we live, we probably conclude, and rightly so, that we are not in the majority. And people no longer honor the fact that we put emphasis upon living the Christian faith. And so we oftentimes may feel like lambs, in the midst of wolves. We may feel that we're being assailed in our efforts to share God's love and to be followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Coming to the Lord's table, as we will do in a few minutes, is one of the ways that we can be reassured of the importance of that mission, but also it's one of the ways that we can be reassured that we are not alone. We're not being thrown to the wolves without anyone, any power being there to guide us and to protect us and to walk with us. And so that makes that extremely important for us as we find reassurance and as we find strength and direction. But I want us to think just very briefly before we do that, what does it mean? for us to seek to be faithful people in the midst of a secular world that seems to increasingly lose sight of what it is to be people of faith and what it is to be true to the faith. Jesus said, I send you two by two to witness to what I have taught you. It was hard then, it is hard today. And oftentimes, I don't think we even do enough, certainly not enough, to equip the saints to help those who are willing to be about the task, who are willing and seek to be faithful, but maybe are not sure just how we go about doing that. 
One of the programs that we have had at Catawba College for the last four years now, and it will be in its fifth this coming summer, uh, is called Discover. And what that program is about is bringing together primarily high school, although we have some junior highs as well, and we use Catawba students who have been through a lot of training and preparation so that they understand how it is to share God's love, uh, to be witnesses to that love, and to help other people come to understand and to accept the faith and to share that faith with others. Both students and faculty and staff members engage. And this is like, I, I sometimes describe it as a confirmation class on steroids because we have so many of our youth today who haven't been through a confirmation class, have been to church very little in their lives, whose parents and families know very little of what it is to be people of faith. And so we bring these, to, these persons together for a week-long experience, and we seek to share with them God's love. In order to prepare for that, we spend all this time with our college students those who um, sign up to be a part of this, in helping them understand how we do that. And all of us, perhaps, question from time to time, how can I be an effective witness? How can I serve God in the way that I know that I'm called to serve, but it's so difficult in a changing world with all of its complexities? A few months ago, I shared in the funeral service for my aunt. She was 94 years of age when she died. But here was a person who had truly lived that commitment of service to Almighty God and to the Church of Jesus Christ. She did not wear it on her sleeve. It was a part of who she was something that had, been surround, had surrounded her from birth in her family and something that she was taught in her local congregation. She was a member of the same congregation all 94 years or after, after she was confirmed at least. And I stopped to think about how had she done this? How had she chosen to be faithful to that calling to be a servant of God. And I thought about the ways she had picked up and driven children and youth to church school and to youth meetings. She had kept the nursery for years and years and years. She had taught Sunday school. She prepared meals for those who were sick and didn't just drop the meals off, but sat with them, visited, prayed with them, shared with them. But more than anything, perhaps, she showed her love of God by worshiping God, by being present regularly and honoring God through worship and the way that she lived her life as a faithful witness. And I'm putting that emphasis upon worship this morning because I think that's one of the most difficult things for many of us to do in this age in which we live when we have so many temptations and so many things pushing in on our time. And in First Church Salisbury, where I attend and am a member, attend when I'm not out preaching somewhere else like I am this morning, you know, we're wrestling with that. How do we as a congregation provide meaningful worship opportunities when so many of our members are not present on a regular uh, every Sunday morning basis. It's hard to have a series of things in that way. It's hard to get people to be a part of church school because they're doing many other things. And that's not bad in the sense that many of those things that they're doing provide opportunities for them to be witnesses to God's love and to show that they're followers of Jesus Christ. It just means that we've got to be intentional in thinking about that. We've got to be in, intentional in asking, okay, how do I now do this? How do I make those times and find those times and, and engage in this business of worship? I think about the song that we sometimes sing Blessed be the tie that binds. 
And that suggests to me what is critical when we gather to worship. Worship not only gives us the opportunity to express our love of God and to glorify God, but it also gives us a time, an opportunity to be bound together as faithful followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need that fellowship. We need that binding. We need to realize that when we seek to live lives of faithfulness and service, we are not out by ourselves. Jesus sent them out two by two. Why not one by one? They needed the companionship of another believer. They needed to be able to do this together. And we need that bonding, and we need that strength that comes from the fellowship that we share with one another, and knowing that we are not alone in this effort. We know that God goes with us, but we need to know that we have the support, the encouragement of our fellow church members with whom we worship, with whom we share together. By sharing together, we grow closer to one another, and therefore we become more capable of sharing God's love. We come to understand one another and to share in more meaningful ways. I think most of us feel inadequate for the task that is before us. We're intimidated by it, and, and with good reason. But we need to be reminded of the promise in the Psalms there. His loving kindness is forever with us. Nothing can harm us when He surrounds us with that loving kindness and that comfort. The psalmist said, In my distress I prayed to the Lord. He answered me and rescued me. What we want and what we need we can find in worship. The comfort the guidance, the bonding, being bound together in ways to find strength in one another, but most importantly in being reminded of God's love for us and that God goes with us in our efforts to serve. When we come to the table this morning, think about this as a table that is very important in our lives. You probably consider the table where you as a family or as an individual even gather to eat on a regular basis to be a very important part of your lives. And it is, because that's where we're fed, physically, where our nourishment, uh, where we meet and embrace that nourishment which is necessary for our physical lives. But this morning we share in a meal together knowing that it represents God's love for us and the strength that we have as a family gathered around this table. And so let us remember those words of the psalmist who assures us that we are lifted up when we worship. Let us remember the words that are written in Galatians who reminds us that when we put our minds on right things, we will be supported in those things and we will receive the preparation that we seek for eternal life with God in His precious kingdom. Daunting the task before us, yes. Impossible, certainly not. And let us continue to strengthen ourselves and prepare ourselves for it as we continue in our worship of Almighty God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Clapp. Now, if the communion assistants was, would please come forward to help prepare the table. Um, Reverend Clapp is going to do something just a little bit differently today. We're going to all actually come up to the table to take communion. And I'll start with the choir first. So, and then I'll come out and direct each section to come up. So, And if there are those for whom it's difficult to come forward, that's certainly fine. We will bring the elements to you.
The service of Holy Communion continues on page 24 in the hymnal. Uh, I invite you to join with me in our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto Thee, O Holy Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, who didst create the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, who didst make man in Thine own image and whose tender mercies are over all Thy works. For all Thy mercies and favors, known to us and unknown, we give Thee thanks. But most of all, we praise Thee, the Father everlasting, for the gift of Thine adorable, true, and only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who by His appearing hath abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. We bless Thee for His holy incarnation, for His life on earth, for His precious sufferings and death upon the cross, for His resurrection from the dead, and for His glorious ascension to Thy right hand. We bless Thee for the giving of the Holy Spirit, for the institution of the church, for the means of grace, for the hope of everlasting life, and for the glory which shall be brought unto us at the coming, and in the kingdom of Thy dear Son. Thee, mighty God, heavenly King, we magnify and praise with patriarchs and prophets, apostles and martyrs, with the Holy Church throughout all the world, with the heavenly Jerusalem, the joyful assembly and congregation of the firstborn on high, with the innumerable company of angels round about thy throne, the heaven of heavens, and all the powers therein, we worship and adore thy glorious name, joining in the song of the cherubim and the seraphim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, And he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. He took it and after they had supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, we beseech Thee, O merciful Father, to send Thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these elements of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be to us the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ. And be pleased now, O merciful Father, graciously to receive this memorial of the blessed sacrifice of Thy Son, which we have here which we offer unto Thee, in union with the sacrifice of our thanksgiving and praise, consecrating ourselves in soul and body, property and life, to Thy most blessed service and praise. Look upon us through the meditation of our great High Priest. Make us accepted in the Beloved, and let His name be as pure a pure and holy incense, through which all our worship may come up before Thee, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, we rejoice before thee, in the blessed community of all thy, communion of all thy saints, wherein thou givest us all to have part. We praise thee for the holy fellowship of patriarchs and prophets, apostles and martyrs, and the whole glorious company 
of the redeemed of all ages who have died in the Lord and now live with Him forevermore. We give thanks unto Thee for Thy great grace and many gifts bestowed on those who have thus gone before us in the way of salvation, and by whom we are now compassed about in our Christian course, as a cloud of witnesses looking down upon us from the heavenly world. Enable us to follow their faith, that we may enter at death into their joy, and so abide with them in rest and peace, till both they and we shall reach our common consummation of redemption and bliss in the glorious resurrection of the last day. Let us join together in the Lord and the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And come now, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says our Lord. Come and share at his table. This is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which has been broken for you and me. Take, eat, and drink of it. Do this now in remembrance of Him. The blessed sacrament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you and me. Eat and drink. Do this in remembrance of Him. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed and broken for you and me. Take, eat and drink of this in remembrance of him. Dear friends, we are sharing together at the table in the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken and shed for us. Eat and drink as you do this in remembrance of him.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you and me. Take, eat, and drink of it. Do this in remembrance of him. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you and me. Take, eat and drink of it. Do this in remembrance of him. This is the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you and me. Take, eat and drink of this. Do this in remembrance of him. Savior Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you and me, take eat of this in remembrance of him.
I invite the congregation to join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty and everlasting God, we give thee most hearty thanks for the great goodness thou hast shown toward us at this time in vouchsafing to lead us through these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son and heirs through hope of thine everlasting kingdom. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as shall please thee through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom and with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. At this time, please stand for the closing hymn, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread, Red Hymnal, page 339. We have come together as the family of God. We have shared together at the Lord's table. We now go forth into the world seeking to serve and share love with others. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. Amen.